In this video, I'm going to be walking you through my general approach to the different types of causes of GI bleeds. And before we start talking about that, we have to first talk about the nomenclature. So there's uh, four general terms that I like to think about when I'm talking about GI bleeds. Hematemesis, which is going to be your bright red blood uh, vomiting. Melanemesis is going to be more of your black coffee ground emesis. Melanoma is going to be more of your black tarry stool. And hematochesia is your bright red stool. And I always had difficulty trying to remember these different terms, but really I just memorized three words. Emesis is another word for vomit. Heme is going to be anything bright red. It's going to be blood, how you describe blood. And melon is more of your black or dark colored. So if you memorize each one of these, you'll kind of be able to piece together all the other terms. So now that you know the different nomenclature of the types of GI bleeds, really how do we think about GI bleeds is really broken down into upper versus lower. And depending on the cause or depending on how you describe the either the emesis or the stool, it's going to lead you more towards the differential of an upper versus a lower GI bleed. So when we're talking about any type of emesis, we're really just talking about upper GI bleeds. That's really, it's going to be very difficult for a lower GI bleed to cause you to have emesis. It would have to pass through the intestines and through the stomach and then go through the esophagus. And that would be quite difficult. The next one is going to be melna. Typically, this is also going to be an upper GI bleed. You think about it, it has to travel through the intestines for a very, very long time uh, before you can have more of this black, tarry colored stool. Hematochesia, we like to think of it more as our lower GI bleed. Um, it's more of something that's closer to the the exit. It doesn't have time to really change colors and, and become more darker. The caveat to both of these is that both of these can be either or. So these are what we typically think of, but you have to really expand your differential because melana can be caused by um, a slow lower GI bleed and hematochesia can be caused by a very brisk or fast upper GI bleed. So there's definitely a preference for each of these terms, but it's not an absolute. So you always have to keep your differential pretty wide. For more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. When I think of upper GI bleed as well as lower GI bleed, what I break it down to is kind of into three categories. Inflammatory, any type of structural cause, as well as any type of vascular cause. So when we think of upper GI bleed, really the main causes that we're thinking of are going to be um, any type of inflammatory issue. And this is going to be these guys up here. Any type of ulcer, any type of mucosal disease, Mallory Weiss, tear, esophagitis. Uh, when we look at this table over here, it's something like 70% of, of, of the causes are going to be caused by some type of inflammatory disease. And that's just talking about any type of duodenal ulcer, any type of gastric ulcer, um, as well as uh, any type of erosions. The next one is going to be structural causes. And in the upper GI setting, when we're talking about any type of malignancy for our structural causes, it's less common for it to be some type of small intestine uh, malignancy that's less common. We're more thinking about any type of malignancy within the stomach or as, as well as the esophagus. And finally, varices are going to be very common. We see that they're about 10% of the causes of upper GI bleeds. Um, and this is going to be our category of vascular. And we'll see why this is more important when we start thinking about uh, comparing upper GI bleed versus lower GI bleed. So when I think about lower GI bleeds, same type of categories, um, I kind of break it down. First off is going to be inflammatory. So that's going to be our IBD patients. And you'll see now that there's a lot more of these others. So malignancy, any type of diverticular disease or polyps are going to be what we start thinking about for structural. So malignancy, we know what that is. Diverticular disease is any type of in-pouching um, and polyps are going to be an out-pouching. So they're just the, the exact opposite. And you can imagine how this can cause uh, bleeding. And vascular causes are actually much more common. And when you start thinking about any type of AV malformations, any type of varices like we had uh, within the esophagus, as well as hemorrhoidal and ischemic colitis. These are going to be very common causes, or at least common things that we'll think about in terms of lower GI bleeds. So this is kind of how I like to think about upper versus lower GI bleeds and how I think about GI bleeds in general, kind of break it down into three different categories once we've broken it down into upper versus lower. And that's our inflammatory disease, our structural disease, and as well as our um, vascular disease. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID cards, scrub notes, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.